This is Peter. And this is Tom. And you're listening to History Teachers Talking Podcasts. All right, this is Peter Zablocki and Thomas Reska, and welcome back to our podcast. All right, Tom, what do we got? Well, today we're going to kind of branch off a little bit from the the history, looking at more pop culture. We're still going to do the history of this, but we're going to examine um, um, social effects or just as a whole. You know, I'm just going to make it simple. We're just going to we're going to be talking about zombies today. Yes, we're talking about zombies. Uh, where it come, where they come from, how they affected pop culture, how they became this like phenomenon. Because I remember, you know, they've always been around or been around for a long time. But I say the last couple of years or so is really when it, um, things took off. Walking Dead, World War Z, things like that. So we're just going to talk uh, really just about zombies as a whole and why people actually want there to be a zombie apocalypse. Right. If you really think about zombies, I mean, that has a really sad story as to why there's zombie. You know, that I think the idea of a zombie exists. And we're going to get into that. And as you mentioned, we'll talk about kind of the history of zombies, and then we'll from there get into whether it's possible to even really for that for zombies to exist, and and then we'll talk about the pop culture really starting with 1930s movies. We'll kind of go forward. We'll talk about a revival of it in the 60s and 70s. Then we'll talk about the dip, and then again the new revival in early 2000s, and then a slight dip, well, and then a revival. We can talk about some like confirmed zombie attacks, right? Because that's the thing. This used to be your thing, like, right? Zombies used thing. to be your thing. Um, right? I guess, yeah, when right before my kid, I was really into zombies and the whole zombie lore. Well, I don't say my thing. I guess I just got really into you it. it. A, lot a little of, bit more than other things. I, uh, a lot of the books, you know, and stuff like that. I think we made a couple uh, zombie <laughs> zombie movies and stuff like that, you know, just messing around, but stuff like that. But yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, honestly, I did, I'm kind of new to this whole zombie thing. I mean, really, just Walking Dead. And not even the show. I tried watching the show years ago. Uh, I put it on at night. I, I watched like two episodes. I was by myself. And I'm like, this is freaky. I don't want to watch this. So I guess I'm a wuss when it comes to that. But I have been reading all the graphic novels. And I can proudly say that I am like almost done. Like tomorrow probably will be done with the entire series of Walking Dead. And that's that's a that's a lot of reading. By the way, great comic books. Just throwing it out there. Now zombies are on like Disney. Like my kids watch a show called Zombies. I think that's yeah. like a movie, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like two movies for for so yeah, two made for TV movies. Well, that's what, making... that's what Disney's known to do. They take historical tragedies and turn them into fairy tales for children. <laughs> if you kind of yeah, <laughs> look at their history, great. Okay, so the zombies as we know it, like where where do zombies come from? Well, there's a whole bunch of um, ideas with this, right, um, and where they come from and stuff like that. But actually, if you go back in history, there's a lot of the origins is being actually credited to a lot of things, which is ancient Greeks. They were kind of these, one of these first ones, uh, civilizations that were um, talking about fear of the undead. Mm-hmm. Right? They had a lot of un, um, archaeologists unearthed a lot of like graves, which contained skeletons pinned down by rocks. Other heavy objects is, you know, presumably because they wanted to prevent the dead from reanimating, but it wasn't really like zombie zombies, right? The folklore about zombies actually comes around um, from Haiti. Yep. Right? I think in the 17th century, you had West African slaves were brought into work on um, Haitian sugar plantations and the brutal conditions left the slaves longing for freedom. So according to some reports that basically they were looking for their afterlife and that the zombie kind of represented the um, horrific life that they had yeah it was a fear the, like being a zombie yeah. was was a fear of a continuation of slavery after death exactly what you're saying and it stems from west african languages so nazumbi like which is d uh, n d z u m b i nazumbi um means corpse mitsogo language and then zombie but with an n n z a m b i means spirit of the dead person in the congo language so west africa where is where most of these slaves were captured and brought over to the new world. And specifically when they were brought to Haiti, um, as you said, they had to work on these terrible plantations. They were, because it was a French colony, they were forced to convert to being Catholic. And, uh, you know, a lot of these slaves brought with them their Western African cultures and religions. So you had this like mix of all kinds of religions um, while the French law still required them to become Catholic. And this this leads to a new, like a birth of like a new mixed religion uh, in Haiti, which we know as voodoo. Technically, as you mentioned, zombie becomes a thing in Haiti because of the fact that there's, it's just such brutal conditions for these slaves 
that a lot of these slaves would ultimately want to just end life like they didn't want to go on anymore so there was this idea of you know let's just commit suicide however committing suicide there was a fear apparently that if you commit suicide you do not go to a good afterlife and if you commit suicide you can somehow become the undead or a zombie or in other words become a slave for the rest of your life so it like further enslaved you in your condition because you felt like you had no way out. Because if you killed yourself, you might become a, a zombie. It's the worst nightmare, right? You become your when you're well, you you basically become mindless. And then in the voodoo religion, although they don't believe there's actually zombies, like you know when we get to the pop culture zombies, there's also the idea of that they using a combination of neurotoxins and stuff like that. I'm yeah. not going to get super into it. They're able to use these and they, they know how to give like certain doses. They're able, they can um, create what we would call yeah. today um, zombie like symptoms, right? Like difficulty yeah. walking, confusion, respiratory problems. High doses can actually put someone in a paralysis in a coma where it will appear that they're actually dead and actually and they're buried alive. And then you, later on, they'll be revived. Basically the neurotoxins wear off and they wake up. And there has been actually, um, cases of this in reported in medical journals where people got this sort of paralysis and they were later um, re revived from the grave. People actually go and dig them up later on. And they would be alive, yep. brought back. And that stems from like this Bokor? Bokor, yeah. Yeah, Bokor. It's Bokor? Like, a, like a voodoo. Bokor sounds better. A voodoo practitioner. And these herb shell, um, I think it comes from a puffer fish, right? They use a yeah, neurotoxin fish, found yeah. in puffer fish. Um, and you're right. It basically causes zombie like symptoms like you could difficulty walking mental confusion you know all these issues but and then they use different toxins to kind of wake you up there's a guy that did a whole study on this however like after he did the study this was i want to say this was in the 80s the guy's name was wade davis that's i was there so he was a harvard scientist and he basically met this haitian man in the 1980s and man claimed to have escaped the sugar plantation after being like forced to work there for two years as basically a zombie. And he said he was given these drugs that you just mentioned and I turned him into this like zombie state and he followed instructions without brains, analytical interference. So this Wade Davis scientist that met him was like, all right, let's figure this out again. This is eighties. It's not that long ago. He looked at his, into, he looked into the zombie powder from this Bokor and because it's a neurotoxin found a puffer fish and when ingested, it would put a, a person in like a death like state. So they would revive the victim with a second poison made from a da Datra, Datura, Datura plant. Right. Um, yeah. Which is basically like because it's also known as zombie cucumber that animated their bodies, but kept them subservient. So this guy, Davis, did this like detailed research on these toxins. However, the scientific society did not approve of his study. And basically said that even though it's possible, these poisons that he looked at to do that, to put you in this like weird animated state, um, they believe that it would be the amount of poison would be inadequate to put humans into a zombie like state before killing them if you add more of that poison. So so even though there was an actual scientific study about is it possible to turn people into zombies, it was discredited in 1980s. Nonetheless, right? So be it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's just so, kind of like the background of it. It has been people. There's been a couple of documented people of people buried in a grave, like we said, and come back three, four days later, like, "Hey, what happened? Like, I don't know. Why'd you guys bury me? And like, oh, you're alive." And because again, they probably ate. They could have eaten something. One of those plants, us, yep. and, and something happened. So there's been just a few medical um, documentation of this actually taking place. Yeah, and then let's um, and also like there's. The idea of a zombie coming to the Western world really does stem from ha you know, Haiti as well. Yeah, it comes from the Haiti. Yes. Yeah, and also Haiti when we region. talk about this idea, it was viewed as like almost like ignorant in a sense because – and that was to discredit Haiti. Um, there was a slave rebellion that eventually overthrows uh, the slave masters in 1791. Haiti is reimagined. It's renamed into Saint-Dominique. It's the first independent black republic, right? From that point forward – it is kind of viewed as a, a place of violence, superstition, death, and mainly because the very existence of Haiti as an independent black republic is offensive to European empires. So they feed off of this, like uh, reports of cannibalism, human sacrifice, and these zombies, and the idea that these people believe in this afterlife, that they're not cultured. So it's initially viewed as a way to discredit blacks in Haiti. So then these stories kind of start to come in towards... 
um, the United States after America occupies Haiti in 1915, right? So these rumors of zombies kind of start to appear. Again, it's all just United folklore. This is the Absolutely. same thing as, and it would be the same thing like if you look in history, we can always talk about in the future, right? The whole idea like vampires and werewolves, like that was all, that was a European version of this. This is yep. kind of just like the Haitian version of some sort of folklore. Again, it's getting mangled in, it's being used by um, people for their own benefits. But it's that same idea they're trying to explain their fears in other ways. Plus, back then, a lot of these times, you know, in the 15th, 16th, 17th century, we're not getting to 19th century yet. But even that time, people were still like, they thought that, you know, it's, there are vampires out there. There's werewolves yeah. out there. So why couldn't corpses be reanimated? They already knew, believed that was happening. So a zombie one is just another offshoot of that. There's nothing changing. And, yeah, but also, like, so, you're right. Like, some people believe that zombies were, were real, which is kind of what brings us to the first movie and first appearance of zombies in a movie. But um, did you ever see the image of Felicia Felix Mentor? She supposedly died in 1907. And then in like 1936, her picture was taken by this this other white woman that was studying Haitian culture. And I mean, if you, I'm looking at a picture now. I mean, she, she looks a little zombie-ish. But they're saying that's clearly a myth. Nonetheless, some people went and started studying these zombies. Well, it's travel writer, 1929, William Seabrook releases the first book on Haiti and talks about voodoo, he calls it the magic island. And in it, he starts talking about like these people that are undead and that they walk and actually exist um, almost in that state of just like forever servitude. And that becomes the basis of the classic 1932 horror film called White Zombie. And which interesting, as the title suggests, right, this is um, about a white rather than an African zombie. Um, that was the first time I think zombie, the name, the word zombie was used in like Western yes. movies. Well, like, yeah, like that's when they're, you're seeing it for the first time actually being called that. Before that, a lot of times they were called ghouls or spirits, mm -hmm. reanimated corpses, whatever. But um, yeah, that's the first time you're seeing things like use zombie. A lot, a lot of time, a lot of people in the country first heard the term zombie at that point. Yep. It's, with this movie, 1932. And it's essentially about a young couple that um, – kind of gets talked into getting married on this Haitian plantation by the owner. And then he like secretly plots to seduce the bride. But at the end he like teams up with someone and then they give the zombie potion to the girl. And it basically, this is your zombie movie. And after that zombies, again, now it becomes kind of like a term in Western culture stemming from Haitian, you know, Haitian culture, voodoo culture, but, now it's introduced to the realm of well, pop, pop culture, culture, horror. Well, it's been, they're thrown in the same thing as like Frankenstein, Dracula, the Wolfman. They, yeah. They're kind of thrown into that whole monster lore. Although now they say and, that there's so many zombie movies that have been made that it's its oh, yeah. own separate genre. It's its own thing. Yeah, if you just look up, if you just Google zombie movies, I mean, it's forget no about the ones actually come movie. out. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It's well, the zombie apocalypse is this whole thing, which we'll, we which we'll get to. Yeah, let's jump into it. Like, let's. I mean, the first movie that yeah. really. 1968. Well, White Zombie. I never saw White Zombie. Though. No, I've never seen White Zombie. 1968. Night of the yeah. Living Dead. I've seen. Yeah, the original. I've seen the original, um, which is actually has its own. It's a, you know quite a few a huge cult following of their own. Night of the Living Dead by George um, Romero, yeah. and um, it really in it, he's never they never mention the word. They never say the word zombie. Yep, that's what the fans started calling it. It's the zombie. Yeah, it's fine. They, they were called referred to as ghouls in the movie, um, but it was grew. If you watch that movie even today. I mean, it's some of the special effects, okay, this, but like they're actually like they're eating like animal entrails, but it, it, make, it makes it look it's like a person and stuff like that. Like it's pretty tense. Because yeah. it's black and white. They did, they did remake it, I believe, in the 70s. And they, well, he been made three two, movies uh, total, right? Yeah. Well, they, well, he made direct spinoffs, which was Dawn of the Dead, which you ever yeah. saw that one. That one's freaky. And um, Day of the Dead. Yeah. The, Dawn of the Dead is more during like modern times, the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. There's Night of the Living Dead, the zombies come, but they're actually get wiped out at the end. Yeah. And you have the whole thing kind of the it's also talking about the racial. I was gonna say it's like a civil too, yeah. rights aspect to it, right? Because the oh, yeah, protagonist very, yeah, yeah. is, is an African American and they're yes. saying this is like what it feels like in a in a civil rights movement. This was done in nineteen sixty eight, which is we did a whole podcast with that. If you want, I'm not gonna give it up, but you 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 see the ending of the movie, there's like debate whether or not okay, well the the main protagonist is African American and he survives the Night of the Living Dead comes out of the basement and then gets shot spoiler. in the head by a sheriff. Spoiler. Yeah, spoiler. Right. Like, gets shot in the head by the sheriff. And there's, like, debate. Did the sheriff know the person was 
you know, yeah, like the person American was not or not. Be, yeah, like yeah, that he did. He just kill him because it was a black guy. So it was this whole, and you know, that was kind of what Romero wanted to kind of like raise that narrative. And they've been, when they they remade the movie different times since then, um, with that ending being a little different at times. But yeah, and anyway, you didn't really give me a definitely. chance to say spoiler or, like for, fast enough. I said I said it for a second for four. Yeah, I guess, and, I guess you can edit in there later on. It's fine. <laughs> no, we're gonna keep it. It's fine. All right. So that was the like. It's funny because since 1930s, it kind of takes a break. This whole idea, like we now know of the term zombie from this movie in the 30s, but then it really, really becomes a pop cultural phenomenon in 1968 with Romero's Night of the Living Dead. And that's when things start to really take off where it brings us more to today. All right. So in the eighties, they become yeah. big, right? And then really, yeah, and then it really starts taking off. Um, I, I don't know. I'm going to say you can take off when you talk about like cartoons are using zombies all the time. Look at Scooby-Doo, right? Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Like, I, that's actually a scary Scooby-Doo movie. For a Scooby-Doo movie. making a sequel to it too, that, that the zombie island one. That. I think yeah. yeah that was like actually freaky. Like I was watching it with my, with my kids years ago. The first one came out. And they're like, this is actually scary. Like Scooby Doo is never scary, but I guess for them it was. But yeah, seventies, seventy, late seventies, it becomes a big thing again. Because um, that Dawn of again, Dead. Again, it's all these, it's all these Dawn of the Dead, a Night of the Living Dead. It's all these zombie spinoffs. You can just yeah. talk about like there's this constant ones. A lot of them have to deal with, and they, they're dealing with the times too. Like the ones in the eighties are like radiation. Oh, radiation is causing it, right? Like the radiation leak from this plant is turning people into zombies, and this is doing this toxic waste that's turning people into zombies. So you're seeing a lot of that. Well, that's, uh, that's also where the idea of an apocalypse comes from. Because, yeah. you know, the zombie apocalypse is basically about a breakdown of society, right? So yeah. there's so much symbolism here that, and it, like, that's what they say it also stems from post apocalyptic, like post 1945 drop of an atomic weapon, is that it's possible that there's going to be some form of an apocalypse, a complete breakdown of society. And, and, zombies kind of take on that role like like it's a zombie outbreak it spreads super quickly so it might as well be it's really attributed to viruses bacteria you know i mean this phenomena that could reduce mental capacity of humans that's basically what what the zombie apocalypse is the battle of waterloo was one of the most famous turning points in world history but what happened next my name's david montgomery and i'm the host of the siecla a history podcast that tackles exactly that. Join me as I cover France's overlooked century in between Napoleon and World War I. The Siècle, spelled S-I-E-C-L-E, is part of the Evergreen Podcast Network and can be found wherever you get podcasts. Not reimagining or imagining, but kind of alluding to, I guess. Well, it's just, and just to give you like a background, I think the one that kind of really, well, there's a whole bunch of stuff about it, but the one that really kind of put a lot of um, zombie stuff and made it more like almost like factual, right? That presented as fact, even though it's tongue in cheek was a Max Brooks's. If you ever read it, the survival zombie survival guide. That was Max the first Brooks, one. Right? And then the second one is yeah. the well, uh, World, World War Z, War Z which yeah. becomes, which I don't know if you ever read is a great book. So yeah, and if you read it, right. if you read it, it really does like, like it's based on journals and stuff and it kind of sets up and it's very, it took place before, you know, it takes, I forget where it takes place in, but like a, Post um, war, United States. If we get out of a war, and they call it a bushfire war, it's when the United States first has an African American president. This was all written before Obama, before the war ended in Afghanistan and stuff like that. So it's really interesting how it reads, in, you know, a virus spreading from China. Oh, okay, right? But um, interesting. And then it kind of spreads like around the world and stuff like that, and everything breaks down. But it's really it's interesting read. But the zombie survival guy before that kind of presents everything zombies but in real life and actually something that if you go to the cdc today they actually have yeah, that's a, awesome i was gonna get to that yeah. uh, preparedness for for a zombie apocalypse and one reason they did that is because of the success of like the zombie survival guide world war z which was made into a movie starring brad pitt which is very different from the, it's different from the book in a lot of ways but they could basically you know they explain what to do if there is a zombie apocalypse so this got a lot of people say oh zombies real it's basically they yeah, put they it out there for because, a second let's just reiterate this the cdc yeah. the centers for disease control and prevention yeah literally has a web page how to prepare like it's basically zombie preparedness 101 like cdc has this just okay yes. continue because i just needed to like well it's basically that. there because if you can survive a zombie apocalypse you would need the same things that you would survive if there was like a hurricane you know 
things exactly. of that nature. So, but you would have like, you know, make sure you have this, make sure you have, you know, batteries and lanterns. Yeah, it's and water. Stuff like it's that. It literally, there's like better safe yeah. than sorry. Z- zombie apocalypse. And I'm on the CDC website right now, by the way. Um, you need to have a kit, emergency kit, water, one yeah. gallon per person per day, food, stock up on non perishable items, medication, tools and supplies, sanitation, hygiene, household, bleach, soap, towels, um, change of clothes for each family member and blankets. Like, this is for a zombie apocalypse, but really, like you said, this is CDC's version of making, not making. F- this more fun, well, no, I they're, guess, they're, they're, right? They're, they're taking on this. They're basically saying, right, people are going to, people, there are groups out there called the Zombie Preparation Foundation, all these different things where they actually come together and meet up. And they're, they're more or less like first aid responders and stuff like that. But they, they're into zombieism, you know, zo- yeah. zo- you know zo- zombie floor, and they just kind of do their thing with that. But if you're prepared for that, if you're prepared for a zombie apocalypse, you're prepared for everything. Exactly. That's I mean, basically right. And CDC says plenty of evacuation route. When zombies are hungry, they won't stop until they get food. Brains, <laughs> which means you need to get out of town fast. Plan where you would go and multiple routes you might take. Like, it, it, I'm CDC. It's kind of cool. And if zombies did start roaming the streets, CDC would conduct an investigation, much like any other disease outbreak. CDC would provide technical assistance to cities, states, and international partners dealing with the zombie infestation. But if, like, the first comment. Just funny, Unpreparedness 101 Zombie Apocalypse when it, and you're on CDC website. Someone says, I might suggest adding a baseball bat, <laughs> preferably aluminum baseball bat, to your emergency kit as well. I think that has a lot to do with pop culture and obviously Walking Dead. But yes. it's crazy that it's CDC has to. this. I think this is crazy. Well, again, they're, they're just they're going to think, hey, if people are going to want to get prepared for it, get prepared for, get prepared for a zombie apocalypse, they'll be prepared for everything. But again, the zombie survival guide ex- also has all that stuff and explains a whole bunch of scenarios and what to do and things like that with zombies and stuff. And because it, it's presented as science, like basically a zombie is a decomposing corpse, right? If you're doing like the Western version of it. So every time you move, what are you doing? You're tearing muscles, right? And stuff like that. That, that explains like the zombie like walk and stuff like that because it's, yeah. it's a rotting corpse. So as they're moving, they're tearing muscles and the ligaments, they're no longer alive. They're not healing. That's how they rot and stuff like that over time. It's the same thing from Walking Dead. If you see the, if you've been watching the show, you see the zombies that turn return early on in the in the show. They're like falling apart basically. They can't move anymore. Whereas the fresher zombies are the ones you really have to like watch out for. There's like yeah. different ones they have to become. And also, actually, in Walking Dead, zombies are like the third most thing you have to worry about now. There's like everything else you have to worry about. Like yeah. Other people are the bigger threats, but and I think that's kind of the thing when the like, society dissolves itself. Like we, that's also symbolism. You know what I mean? Like we become yeah. animalistic. One thing like kind of before we, we touch upon that stuff is we forgot to mention the fact that zombies came back to pop culture because they kind of died down a little bit um, in the 80s, like late 80s. But really it's the video games and yeah. specifically one video game that kind of resurfaces the idea of zombies in pop culture. And that is in 1996, uh, Resident Evil. Right by Cap, uh, Capcom. I mean, I remember playing that game. First of all, I remember going to Bar- uh, Barnes and Jesus. I remember going to Blockbuster, and I don't know if you remember this when you could rent systems yeah, for the yeah, weekend. Like PS One, we didn't have PS One. We had a you know, it was Sega Genesis. So I remember my brother and I went and we rented a PS One, and it came in this big suitcase. And we walked over to Blockbuster, we rented it, we brought it home, we connected it. This was great. And we got Resident Evil, and my parents went out somewhere that you know that day with somebody. It was the nighttime, and my brother was, I guess, watching me, and we were playing Resident Evil. I was so freaked out. You know, I was young, but not that young, but young enough. And I mean, I was like, this game is super scary. And now yeah, you look at it now too. Yeah, I know. Like now they remade it, like same premise, same story, just like update it. But it's like. It didn't age so well, but it was a freaky game. And then also Sega's House of the Dead, which sometimes you see um, when you go to arcades. For those of you that still yeah, that's kind of remade, yeah. But and again, and that this caught on because people like the idea of just hey, these are the zombies, and just, it's like an endless horde. Like a zombie isn't like Dracula. Like there's like there's no like named zombies. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's just it's just the whole thing about a zombie is one zombie you're fine with if you know what to yeah. do, right? So, Destroy the brain. Yeah, there you go. You're good. It's not. It's not. It's the endless hordes. Like, it's unstoppable. That's what it is. It's like the virus. It's just yeah. you know these zombies. Their only thing is just to consume flesh. That's all. That's all they're looking to do. So and, and for video game people out there, I, Tom, have you ever played The Last of Us? I know of it. I never played. What it. What a no. great game. I mean, that game was awesome. I literally got to like the very end of the game. It was on PS. I like dusted off my PS3 like a year ago, and I played it. 
I got to the almost very end, and then my PS3 crashed and erased everything. That's not fun. Which well, is that's the why... one I did play a while ago, but it was um, Dead Rising, I think. Never that's one where like, you're uh, like a photographer. Yeah, because you have Silent Hill, Dead Rising, Dead yeah, Island, Dead Rising, Left 4 playing. Dead, Dying Light. Like, There's so many zombie-esque games. I feel like that's really kind of driving that forward with the younger... It doesn't Call of Duty has has like a zombie level and stuff like yes. that. Yes, and same thing with uh, Rockstar's um, Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I mean, I'm playing the second one, but the first oh, one, yeah. there's like a they zombie. Have, yeah, there's like a zombie version and stuff like that. Yeah, and there's been a lot of movies but when they incorporate zombies in. I think probably the most famous or like book, and it became a movie too, I believe, was what, Pride, Precious, and Zombies? Yes. But they took uh, Jane Austen's novel and just uh, threw in zombies in, into it. Yeah, that's what subgenre now. And same thing with yeah. uh, um, A. Blinken, uh, Vampire. Vampire. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, Vampire. yeah. So they just, I think there's also a couple other ones. Where it was like something in Sea Monster, so I forget what it was. But like the idea of you're taking these classic stories and just combine them with this, you know, horror lore, and see where it goes from there. Okay. Um, you got anything else about any fun facts about zombies? Well, I, the one I wanted to talk about was what some of these like official, I'm not official, but. They're known as zombie attacks, or some people talk about them as zombie attacks. And I'm sure okay. one of the most famous ones was on um, May 26, 2012. I remember this. My students were talking about this because 2012 was also when, like, you know, the world was supposed to end. There was all those like some people talking about zombie things and everything. And I remember my students were like, "Oh man, this uh, zombies are real." Did you see this story and stuff like that? So it actually happened in Florida, in Miami. And the whole thing was filmed. There was an 18 minute encounter with this man by the name of um, Rudy Eugene. And he attacked and maimed um, Ronald uh, Popo. And he basically attacked this guy on May 26, 2012. And um, before this, Eugene was, he was, Eugene was naked, right? And he attacked mm-hmm. him and actually started um, biting his face. You remember hearing about this? Mm-mm. He actually bit the, he ate the guy like about a quarter of the guy's face off, like his eye and everything like that. And the cop, and a cyclist was riding by, saw what was going on. Like, oh my God, call the cops. The cops come. They actually shoot. Rudy, they shoot him several times. He looks up and growls at them and continues to bite on the guy's face. Wow. And then the cops fire a few more times and then actually um, do this. But um, yeah, he, the guy was, um, Popo lost his eyebrows, his nose, part of his forehead and his cheek and his left eye and was left totally blind due to all the damage he had from his remaining eye. So Ooh. yeah, he was like really messed up after this, obviously. And basically the guy who attacked him was probably on a uh, bath salt. That's what they think he was on. Oh. Um, okay. But uh, you know, people are like, no, that was a, zo- it's a zombie apocalypse, and you know, it was the beginning of it, and it's being squashed by the government because of what happened. <laughs> but uh, wow. yeah, it was one of those things. There's a few other things of that too that were coming out during that time. But I thought that was like, it's you know, it was a ca- ca- it's classified under a cannibalistic attack. But it actually was. People say no, this is a zombie attack. The guy was a zombie. Well, talk about attacks. There's a law in Haiti that actually makes it a criminal offense to turn someone into a zombie. Yeah, so yeah, it's like Article 249. Yeah. It dictates that if someone drugs another person, right, and then buries them as, as though they were dead and then digs the person up and then brings them back to life or at least attempts to, it is still considered murder, even if they do bring them back to life. As long as you bury a person, that's, that's kind of crazy. What about this? If there's a zombie apocalypse, where, do you, where would you go? Me? Where do you think would be like, the best place? Basement and cry. I don't. I got nothing. Oh, I was in the house. I mean, see, I didn't oh, read the books go, you read. Oh, yeah, well, the books. Yeah, the, the books. Have one. Well, they said the safest place would be like an island, so like Australia would be a good bet. If you can just oh. go in the middle of Australia, you have to be able to survive there. But um, yeah. Well, you have a two-story house, so you'd be okay just to show the staircase, hang out upstairs. You know, as long as you had uh, protection, you'd be uh, all right. Did you know that? I didn't know this. For I don't know how do I. I mean, obviously, I probably know it in a couple of weeks. But World Zombie Day takes place around the globe on October October eighth. Yeah, October eighth. Yeah. That. There's always have, um, I know my school always had, well, they used to always have when like, they had a zombie run, like a zombie 5K, wherever it was. Hmm. You would dress up as zombies and other people would dress up as zombies and you would just basically run and as you're running away from zombies, you always have that. It's also used as a um, to, as protest too. A lot of times people would dress up as zombies and like lay out in front of like um, tobacco companies and stuff like that. They say, listen, you're, you're turning people into zombies, you're a product is killing people, turning them into zombies because they become addicted to the, to the product and stuff like that. Okay. All right. Good to know. There's something I read about, like, I think it was like a fungus or something that could potentially turn ants into zombies. Yeah. What it is is, yeah, it affects their brain and then it has them eat a certain plant. Yes. And then from there, it'll go. There's actually another one with, um, 
uh, what was it? It's this type of virus, or I guess what a fungus, whatever you want to call it, a virus, I believe. And it, it's inside of, um, it goes into rats, excuse me, but it, and it makes the rats um, get, um, how can I say this nicely, very excited around um, cat urine. What? Wait, okay. So, so, that, it, so it, this fungus <laughs> attacks rats, which makes them excited by cat urine? Because it wants to get into, because the fungus itself wants to get into, um, but yeah. what it does is basically it makes the cats, it makes the rats attracted to cats, and the cats then eat the rats, and then the, the fungus gets inside of rats, gets inside of cats. That's really what it wants to be. That's what it wants <laughs> that is that. so convoluted. So it makes, oh. so, so, but, but it make, but our point is, it's one of these things. So it makes the rats then go after cats, you know, be attracted to cat urine, so they're going after cats, which is basically going to get them eaten and killed. Which then allows the fungus to then get into the cat where it wants to go because it lives in the, it wants to live in the cat's stomach. Okay, <laughs> that's nuts, <laughs> dude. Crazy, right? But it's one point. Like, so there are some scientists I was reading too that said like, a zombie apocalypse is theoretically possible. But again, I don't, I don't know how much it is. It could just be that they probably want it. And there's a lot of people. I think they did a poll. This is also years ago, and now where people actually polled and they were like, listen, a lot, most of those like a hard, large number of Americans actually were like rooting for a zombie apocalypse to happen. Just so they could like see what how they would react in it, you know. Oh God. Which I don't think I, no one really want it. If you actually watch these movies, you know, you don't want it. But they're like, oh yeah, they want to be like down on going down roller skates down a hill with like a blade, yeah, just chopping yeah. heads off. It's not it's not quite how it would work, but yeah. that's uh, and us. yeah. They get excited yeah. about it. They get excited about it. All right. Well, I guess that was a good nice introduction to uh, to zombies. Thank you, um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in once more. If you need to find us, you can find us at historyteacherstalkingpodcast.com. Please feel free to email us. You can always find us on Facebook and other social media as well. With that in mind, I hope everyone has an awesome week, and we'll see you guys next week. Enjoy. Watch out for zombies. <laughs> Later, Tom. I hope everyone enjoyed our podcast, and if you would like to email us, you can do so at historyteacherspodcast at gmail.com. History is complicated. The story of human progress is long, messy, and riddled with controversies big and small. On Conflicted, we dive headfirst into history's most infamous events and contentious figures. We try and untangle the good from the bad, the fact from the fiction, and the monsters from the misunderstood. Was Genghis Khan a murderous butcher or a civic pioneer? Did the Allied powers go too far in firebombing the German city of Dresden at the twilight of World War II? And how did the Marquis de Sade acquire such a sinister reputation? And was any of it true? These are just a few of the tough questions we wrestle with and investigate on Conflicted. So if you love history or just enjoy a good story, please join me, your host, Zach Cornwell, for a fascinating new topic each and every month. Conflicted, a history podcast is available on Spotify, Apple, or wherever else you get your podcasts. I hope to see you soon.